Hello and welcome to a very special episode. Today I'm making a sort of dress up special occasion sweater out of some of my favourite yarn. This project was a really exciting one to work on because it's the first ever full recreation project I've ever made. In the spirit of the season, I have decided to cast on my own party outfit. And of course, the star of this event has to be my own handmade sweater. Now, some of you may know that I originally planned on making this sweater for Christmas, but with all of the rushing around and preparing presents, I didn't have quite enough time to finish it for that. Now, the inspiration behind this piece is actually a recreation of a sweater that I've seen on Instagram a few times and immediately fell in love with. Unfortunately, though, after scouring the internet for days, I realised it was completely out of stock. And I found it at one reseller, but I wasn't quite sure that the fit would be exactly right. I looked at the construction of it and felt like it was quite similar to another sweater I had spotted on Ravelry. And this brings us to the beautiful puff tee pattern by Knitting for Olive. I knew I would have to make a few modifications, but I didn't let that deter me, so I set my heart on making this puff tee. And to match the beautiful pattern, I selected some of my favourite yarns, also for Knitting for Olive. In keeping with the piece that I had decided to recreate, I swapped out the two strands of mohair for one strand of merino and one strand of kid silk from Knitting for Olive. This is such a beautiful combination that I've tried a couple of times now that is really soft and smooth against the skin. So perfect for little projects like this where I don't necessarily want to wear loads of layers underneath and maybe also want to wear in the spring and summer or when I'm going to get dressed up for a special event where I know I'm going to be indoors and quite warm. The colour that I went for to match the beautiful hue of the original is the cream shade from Knitting for Olive in both the merino and the mohair. This is like a perfect kind of not too cool and not too warm cream. I think if you hold it up to the daylight it does tend to lean a little bit more yellow but that's probably my personal preference as I find really bright whites can make me look a little bit washed out. So with my pattern selected and my yarn ordered, I set about making a swatch. Now of course, the puff sleeves are the most important element of this puff tee, but the other superstar of the sweater that I wanted to recreate are these beautiful black bows that cover all of the front and go a little bit down onto the sleeves. I was dithering about whether I wanted to change the colour, because if I had casted this on in time for Christmas, I had been contemplating maybe using red velvet bows that I think would look equally good. But I settled on copying the original and I went to my little local haberdashery and they advised me to get this beautiful satin black ribbon, which is really good because it doesn't fray too much, or at least I've got my fingers crossed that it won't as I wear and wash this sweater. And here it is, your first sneak peek of my swatch with the black bow actually on it. This was such an exciting moment in the project because I felt like my ideas were actually going to work. If any of you are interested in the behind the scenes of my videos, like this beautiful little swatch that I shared a few weeks ago, do follow me over on Instagram. I post there quite regularly and um, it's just a lot of fun. It's a great way to get in touch with me and let me know of anything I might be interested in or if you decide to recreate any of the pieces that I've shared with you on YouTube. But before I get into the construction of the rest of this beautiful little sweater, I want to introduce you very briefly to the sponsors of today's video. For our sponsored segment today, I'm really excited to introduce you to the sustainable footwear brand Vivaya. Now Vivaya reached out to me and asked me if I would like to try some of their beautiful shoes and I just couldn't give up the opportunity. Above all, Vivaya has made it their mission to create shoes that are both comfortable and environmentally conscious. I really wanted to work with Vivaya as soon as I heard about their mission of using recycled plastic water bottles to create the interesting stretchy knit upper that they use in their footwear. The first option that I went for as soon as I saw them was this gorgeous pair of square toe Margot Mary Janes in this lovely shade of red. Many of you will have noticed that red has kind of taken the internet by storm this year, so these are just the perfect complement to a lot of the pieces that I'm going to look at adding to my wardrobe in 2024. I was immediately struck by the very stylish square toe design of these Margot Mary Janes. 
I also really appreciate the fact that the strap feels extremely sturdy and is completely adjustable to whatever size you like. Another brilliant aspect of these is that the knit material and construction makes them extremely bendy and also completely machine washable, so they're a really great option for travelling. While being extremely stylish, this square toe look does also give me that comfortable extra room for my wide feet, which I really appreciate. For my second choice, I decided to go for something extremely chic and very modern, and these are the Marcella water repellent zipper boots. There are so many things to adore about these boots. Of course, I love the square toe design, just like with the Margot Mary Janes, and I appreciate how the heel gives you that little bit of extra height, but also the stability because it's nice and chunky. The zip also feels very smooth and hardy, which will make them nice and easy to slip on and off. Most of all, I really appreciate how the knit fabric stretches and really hugs my foot. That will make sure to keep me nice and toasty warm all winter long. As I tend to live in a really good pair of ankle boots when it's cold outside, I really appreciate how these insoles feature shock absorption and arch support, which means that I won't get tired when I'm walking around all day. Now my last option is this really elegant pair of Julie Chunky heels. I selected these because I feel like they're very reminiscent of classic shoe styles. I absolutely adore the black and beige pairing and I think that it will just go with so many outfits when I want to feel a little bit more elevated and a little bit more dressed up. However, I'm happy to report that that doesn't mean I'll have to compromise on comfort. I particularly enjoy the fact that it has extra cushioning at the back by your ankles to prevent blisters. As mentioned on their website, these are a pair of heels that you could walk or even run in, and they're made from this gorgeous knit material created from recycled water bottles. Thank you so much for checking out today's sponsor. I have provided links down below to all of the pairs that I selected, and if you fancy ordering some of Avaya's shoes for yourself, do be sure to use my code IC12 for 12% 12 off your order. Now let's get back to the video. As I decided to go for a slightly different combination of yarn and I'd swatched that up, I did realise that I probably wouldn't get quite the finish that I wanted if I stayed with the original needle size called for in the pattern. So I did size up by half a needle size for the main body section which just gave me a slightly thicker and less transparent fabric that I think was more in keeping with the original idea I had in my head when recreating this project. Although the yarn that I went for doesn't completely match the original pattern, I have to say that it does knit up equally well in these two yarns together, and if you're looking for something that is a little bit less fuzzy and a little bit less transparent, I think that this is a really good swap. As I made this change, the swatch was extra important, but I was very happy to see that I would probably be able to size down my needles and not lose too much of the fit that I wanted. When I was selecting my size, I did roughly follow the sizing guidelines that they provided me, because I knew I wanted a little bit of a closer fit, but I didn't want to actually size up too much in case it would be extra baggy because the ease that they recommended was already more than I actually intended to create in my final piece. So with my size selected and my ribbon purchased, I set about casting on the beautiful double thick collar. While doing a quick comparison of the finished pieces on Ravelry with the silhouette that I wanted to create, I could immediately notice that I would probably have to make my double folded collar a little bit longer, so that's exactly what I did. I extended it by just a few centimetres, but I think that the extra length gives it a slightly more crisp and finished look. After finishing this beautiful soft and squishy collar, I moved on to the very complex but also extremely rewarding short row shaping and armhole setup construction. One of the most impressive elements of this pattern has to be the armhole construction. The way that they add in saddle shoulders, which include this slight rectangle at the shoulder that gives it a very interesting finish, is really beautiful and it feels quite effortless to knit. Even though it does require some initial concentration, um, yeah, definitely some concentration in the beginning when you're looking at all of these short rows and also the increases for the sleeves. Once you get over that initial barrier, it is very easy to learn and you kind of understand the logic of where the pattern is trying to lead you. So once I got into the swing of things, I was feeling a lot more confident and I was happily working away on my short rows. However, I did notice some bumping 
Um, as the short row shaping comes all the way around to the front of the collar, I was getting a slight short row bump happening on one side of my collar. Now I think that might just be because when I work the short rows on either side, I do tend to get some inconsistencies. I don't know if it's on the pearl or the knit side, but one of my sides is a little bit more bumpy than the other. However, I try not to worry too much about that as I was fairly sure it was going to come out with a good block. And here it is. You can see that I knit down all of the yoke and it was really exciting to finally see what I imagined to be quite the big puffy sleeves taking shape. The yoke section of this piece is definitely the most challenging for anyone who's considering recreating this themselves. However, I do think that it teaches you a lot about top-down construction because there are so many different techniques at play in this piece. And the fit is really, really excellent. The short rows do give you that heightened section at the back, which means that it tilts forward and is a little bit more flattering around the bust area. And the double folded collar is just, mwah, I mean, chef's kiss. Who doesn't love a thick double folded collar? It keeps you extra warm, but it also just looks very chic and very polished. Having finished the yoke, the next part of the project was inevitably the lines and lines of stockinette for the body. As I wanted to keep this sweater quite cropped and short, just like in the original pictures, I didn't have to knit mine quite as long as they recommended in the pattern. I will include in my description down below a Ravelry page with all the kind of dimensions and all of the little changes that I made to my own version for anyone who's really interested in creating it sort of exactly like this. Um, just because I could tell you loads of numbers now, but I reckon having it written down on Ravelry is probably the easiest way for you to figure that out. And after a slightly fiddly sort of yoke shaping section, who doesn't love a little bit of mindless stockinette? And I'm happy to report that because this yarn is such a joy to knit with, it really glides off my metal needles. So knitting this stockinette body was really rewarding and just enjoyable. I kept on trying it on throughout the process as I am quite fussy about where my jumpers sort of hit me at the moment. I wanted it at that perfect point so it would look puffy and cute when I actually tuck it into my trousers because as you can see in one of the images here I think that that is such a cute way to wear it and probably how the original piece was intended to be worn. So smaller tiny needle size and a little bit shorter rib is what allowed me to achieve I would say more of a puff effect. Um, exactly like what I wanted to really give it that kind of like marshmallowy cuteness of the original. And here it is! This is the finished body before I set to work on making my big puff sleeves. I was already really happy with the final fit of this. As I sized down throughout the whole body, I was getting a closer fit than the original sizing because I believe the original was supposed to be about 110 centimeter finished circumference. Um, mine was quite a bit smaller than that, but that's exactly how I wanted it. So uh, that worked out really well, which I was really happy about as I was a little bit nervous playing with all the different needle sizes. And holding up the bows just made me even more excited. Ah, the bow section was just around the corner and I had only a couple days to go. I went for slightly shorter sleeves that stopped sort of just above my elbow. Um, I also wanted the tighter rib around my arm, but I had to pay extra attention to this section as I didn't want to look a bit like a sausage with it too tight kind of cutting off my circulation to my arm. So I played around with the rib sizing for the needles a couple of times, but eventually I was happy with it and one of my puff sleeves was ready to go. And here I'll show you the up close of the puff sleeve construction. And isn't it just gorgeous? When I make things like this, it really makes me so excited to be a knitter. The construction that you can achieve with just a few simple increases and decreases never fails to amaze me. And the ingenuity of the people who design pieces like this is just fantastic. With only a couple of days to go before New Year's Eve, it was a mad rush to get my second sleep done but I did it quite quickly as I was shortening them and the very very long yoke meant that I had already constructed quite a bit of the sleeve before I actually got into the separate sections. 
and with both sleeves done here it is so this would have just been my finished and altered puff tee which I'm really happy with the fit of. Such a beautiful pattern, even if you're not thinking about including any bows or finishing. But I do think that the plain, lovely kind of rectangle that this sweater provides you down the middle is the perfect canvas to add something really special. So I sat down with the very long and arduous task of creating loads and loads of tiny little bows. I originally created about 20 bows as I wasn't sure exactly how many I would want and I thought if I have too many I'll just do something cute with them. I can even put them on my Christmas tree next year. And I made them all. They are a little bit smaller than the ones in my recreation sweater. However, I am happy with the way that they look and how crisp and pretty they are. There are so many resources online about how to make bows in a really crisp and neat way and unfortunately I'd found one when I made my swatch and then I completely lost that video and I couldn't find it for days and days and days so it was a search for this beautiful bow video. Finally I tracked it down again and I will of course link it down below for you. With a mountain of bows created and my top very very carefully steam blocked I was ready to put it all together. I was a little bit nervous about the colour of my bows leaking into my beautiful cream mohair so I did do a funny little test where I attached my bow to my swatch and I submerged it and kind of let it drip dry and I'm happy to report that there was no colour transference at all so phew, <laughs> I don't need to worry about that when I wash it in the future and I set about attaching all of these bows to my sweater I did it in a few different ways, I kind of followed the placement of the original but maybe added a few extras because they were a little bit smaller. And there it is, it's all done and I want to show you the finished piece on which I'm so so happy with. Although it was originally intended to be a Christmas sweater, I do think that I'm very happy that I actually kept this for New Year's Eve. There's something so cute and celebratory about all of this explosion of bows and this is the first ever recreation piece that I've properly tried and I'm really really excited about doing more in the future. Just that amazing feeling of seeing something, finding a pattern that matches and recreating it all by yourself in the fibres that you really really love. It's so satisfying and rewarding and I would recommend it to anyone who hasn't tried it yet. Next time you spot something, just have a look for a pattern, you never know, and try and make it yourself. Because sometimes the fit and the feel can be even better than the actual thing that you saw in a shop. Thank you for following along with this video and thank you for anyone who checked out the beautiful offerings of my very generous sponsor today. It really is so much fun to work with different brands and to style lovely things in different ways. So thank you so much for all the support this year and Happy New Year! Bye!